Last week, I saw a lot of headlines about a space propulsion system that uses nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion in space. Very cool. Let's have a look. So the news comes from a company by name Rocket Star Inc., which announced in a press release that they have reinvented spacecraft by releasing the world's first fusion-enhanced space thruster, the Firestar TM Fusion Drive. They claim that the Firestar TM Fusion Drive improves their water-powered pulsed plasma thruster by harnessing a neutronic nuclear fusion by 50%. Let's try and sort out the technical mumbo-jumbo, starting with the basics. What's a thruster? A thruster is a device that generates thrust, which is what rocket scientists call a force. Yes, that's just mass times acceleration, good old Isaac Newton. The unit of thrust is also called Newton. Sorry, Albert. In space, the only way we know to generate thrust is throwing stuff out of the spacecraft. You throw things out one way, and since action equals reaction, the spacecraft will go the other way. Yes, that's Newton again. The warp drive guy seems to want to get around this somehow, but I can't really see that working out. In a normal rocket, you throw out fuel as quickly as possible. The thrust you need to shoot something into space from Earth's surface depends on the size of the thing you're trying to get off the planet. But for a typical NASA rocket, it's in the ballpark of 40 million Newton or so for the first stage. That's a lot and is why space travel is so difficult and also expensive. A plasma thruster now is a different propulsion method, though it works by the same basic principle, namely throwing stuff out. In this case, you take some sort of gas and make a plasma out of it by electric sparks. That the gas becomes a plasma means that the electrons float around freely and are no longer bound to the atoms. Once you have the plasma, you can separate that into positive and negative charges, accelerate them with electric and magnetic fields, and then throw them out of the spacecraft. Plasma thrusters do exist. In one of the most widely used ones, the gas comes from evaporating Teflon. The nice thing about plasma thrusters is that they're very energy efficient. This is because with the electric and magnetic fields, you can convert a big part of the energy into directed motion of your fuel, that's the plasma. Chemical propellants are far less efficient. The downside of plasma thrusters is that they produce very little thrust. We're typically speaking about a few millinewton. You can't use these thrusters to get anything off the planet. However, once you're in space, you need very little thrust to move a spacecraft. Suppose you have a satellite in orbit or a telescope at its intended location. The only thing you need to do then is minor corrections. And then what matters isn't lots of thrust, but that the energy source survives for a long time. Plasma thrusters are really good at that. Okay, so that explains the thruster and the plasma. Now this new company has been using plasma created just from water. Water has a fairly low density, so that sounds not so great. On the other hand, some amounts of water have been found on the moon and on some asteroids, and it could be something that a spacecraft can actually refuel, which is hard to do with Teflon, unless possibly an alien pan dealer comes your way. And that it's pulsed means what you think it means. They shoot the stuff out in pulses. That's probably more efficient than doing it continuously because you don't want the ions to get in the way of each other as you accelerate them. Now the thing with the fusion. If you ionize water, you don't just get H2O ions. Ripping off the electrons tends to destabilize the entire molecule, so it often falls apart into an HO and an H, which is just a proton. These guys now shoot with a boron beam at the protons. The boron nucleus can capture the proton, which creates a carbon isotope that's unstable and decays into several helium nuclei. 
The point of doing this is that the binding energy of carbon is lower than that of boron, so that process releases energy. Among the elements that you can fuse with a proton, boron has the second lowest energy threshold for a fusion process that does not release a neutron. This is why it's called aneutronic. That's nice because neutron radiation is really nasty and rapidly degrades materials. This is also why boron fusion would be much preferable for fusion fusion reactors. However, getting boron to fuse with hydrogen requires much higher temperatures than the more commonly pursued deuterium tritium fusion, so very few groups work on that. In any case, these guys now say, hey, we inject the boron into the plasma. The boron fuses with some of the protons that creates carbon, which decays and we get an extra kick. They say they've measured the decay products, so they know that the fusion actually happens. Their press release says it's increased the thrust by 50%. That brings them to maybe 24 millinewton. They're planning to launch their propulsion system into space with a SpaceX rocket in July to see how it performs. And that's all well and good, but I think the key question is how much energy they had to use to arrive at that increase in thrust. Unfortunately, the press release doesn't say anything about it. I'm somewhat skeptical. It's energy efficient because if it was, why aren't they just producing energy with boron fusion? You might find 24 millinewton a bit disappointing, so let me not withhold from you that engineers have totally made conceptual plans for powering rockets for good with nuclear fusion or fission. The most famous example is maybe the Project Orion that was based on the idea of detonating small nuclear bombs behind the spacecraft and then riding on the shock waves. The concept was abandoned in the 1960s, though the idea of riding riding on shockwaves later became the founding principle of social media. If that isn't quite your thing, you can use pretty much any nuclear fusion reactor as a propulsion device because they generate fast charged particles that you can throw out one end of the rocket and off you go. That could generate a lot of thrust from very little fuel, which is ideal for space travel. And yes, that means that every company which is working on nuclear fusion reactors is basically also working on a rocket propulsion system, though it would work better for smaller devices. That said, I'm wondering now, why does Einstein not have a unit named after him? I'd like to propose we use the Einstein as a unit of ingenuity. I'll give fusion-enhanced plasma thrusters 0.1 Einstein, not a bad start, but more work is needed. Remember that I told you a few months ago that I switched to a new internet browser, Opera? I've now been using this for a couple of months and I've found it to be super useful. Opera is much better for combining all different parts of my work in one. For example, you have this extra sidebar here where you can put your socials so you don't have to look for them among the open tabs. Opera also has a built-in AI called Aria, which is saving me a lot of time. First of all, it's good for grammar checks and word use questions, but it'll also summarize text for me so I don't have to open yet another app to get this done. And the tab islands are really cool. They let you group browser tabs together into topics. You just mark them, open the menu and drop them into a tab island. Then you can expand and collapse each island individually. Opera also has a built-in VPN and ad blocker, so you don't have to install any extra apps or plugins for that. This also makes it noticeably faster than other browsers. But the coolest thing about Opera is that it's free. That's right, it doesn't cost anything. All you have to do is go and download it. So give it a try. I'm sure you'll like it too. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.